Hey, give God your best worship today. Because we believe that when we give God his best, he'll give some things to us. And I know there's somebody here today that needs God to grant some things in their life today. You know, one thing that I want you to have, even in this season of this year, is to have peace. Can somebody say peace? See, the truth of the matter is, is that Jesus will give you peace that passes all understanding. Come on, give him some praise if he'll give you peace that passes all understanding. You know, there's a song we're about to sing. It's called Emmanuel. Somebody say Emmanuel. You know what that means? That means that God is with us. You know, I want to tell you today as we go into worship today that God is with you. I want to tell you today, even when you're going through storms, that God is with you. So you can come here today, you can shout unto God with a voice of triumph because God is with you. So I want to ask you the question, will you send some praises up? Will you send the praises up to God today? Because when you do that, God's going to shower down a blessing in your life. God's going to shower down some deliverance in your life today. As your head's about very quickly, just ask God to shower down some blessings. Ask God to answer your praise right now. Ask God to deliver as you pray to him, as you talk to him right now. We believe that God is going to be with us during this moment. We believe that God is with us even on today. We believe that his presence is in this place. So ask God to just inhabit your praise this morning. And we're going to talk to him right now. Heavenly Father, we lift you up. We call you Emmanuel. We believe that when we come and when we adore you and when we lift you up, you will help us to feel your presence in this place. God, we pray if there's anybody here who is sick, anybody here who, who needs your, your healing today, we pray for healing powers on this morning, knowing and believing that our God is a healer, knowing and believing that our God is a deliverer, knowing and believing that God, that you, God, are with us even on today. So we lift you up, we adore you, and we magnify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, can you give God a hand clap of praise today? Let's stand on our feet and let's sing together. Emmanuel, come, come let us adore him. Yes. Oh, yeah. 
worship you, Jesus. We worship you. No, no, no. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Yeah. Honor and power, it all belongs to God. Do I have any witnesses this morning? Is anybody excited this morning about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Are you excited that he was born? We don't have to wait till December 25th to give him praise, to give him honor, to give him glory. He deserves the highest praise. Everybody say hallelujah, hallelujah, salvation, salvation and glory, honor and power.
Come on, let's stand on our feet and give God the great big damn praise. Come on, give him. Let's stand with the choir today. Praise him. Hallelujah. in the house today as you bow your heads in the word of thanks unto God even now God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think what is it that you need from God today we are so grateful that you are here this morning we're grateful to God that your presence is here we're grateful to God for those who are looking at us uh, online even now and we ask that you also bow where you are in your kitchen at your kitchen table we ask that you bow in your living room even in your bedroom and trust God even today for the miracles and the healings that you stand in the need of what is the healing and the miracles that you stand in the need of right now God is able God is willing but he says that the way that he works is through asking again you think that God's gonna bless you God's gonna do this for you God already knows your needs God already knows your desire that is true but he operates based upon your asking. So you have to ask. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. But you have to ask for it. You say, well, Reverend, God knows I need food. You've got to ask for it. God knows I need healing. You've got to ask for it. God knows I need a new job. You've got to ask for it. God knows I'm lonely and I need some friends. You've got to ask for it. God knows I need peace in the midst of this storm. You got to ask for it. God knows I need to be protected from this disease and pandemic. You've got to ask for it. That's just the way he operates. If you ask not, you receive not. That's what the Bible says. Ask not, receive not. He wants a relationship with you and the way that he builds that relationship is through providing for you by way of you asking. When you ask for these particular things, you'll come to the conclusion that every good and perfect gift comes from above. That God is still in control when you ask. And when you ask, you walk away happy in the Lord, joyful in the Lord, because you've asked him for something. Now listen, I've asked you to bow your head. You haven't done that. But you got to ask for some big things. Don't ask for small things, ask for big things ask for great things ask for lovely things ask for kind things ask for blessings god is a big god we look at santa claus and santa claus is not a little skinny santa claus but he comes riding on his big sleigh with his big deer that leads the sleigh and that that rudolph who is head of the uh, other deer they're large and he he rides through the skies and you can see him at a distance because he is supposed to be a big Santa Claus. Well, it's the same thing with God. God is a big God and he wants to give you some big things. And if you cannot envision big things, you get little things. And so you need to ask him for some big things. God, I don't need just this little small house. Maybe I need this mansion. God, I don't need this little jalopy. Maybe I need this brand new uh, a car. God, I need this, that, and the other. God, I need to walk in the anointing and consecration so when people see me, they will know I am anointed and appointed by you. God, I need big health. I don't need just a little healing. I need big healing. I want to be completely healed. I don't want to just be completely healed for today. I want to be completely healed the rest of my life. That's asking God for big things. Have I got a witness? But then when you ask God for big things, remember, 
to whom much is given, uh, you've, to, you've got to, you're going to have to give back to God in also a big way. Have I got a witness? You've got a first family. When was the last time you really prayed for your big first family? You can do it right now. You can talk to God right now for our family. We stand in the need of prayer. You can ask God to pack this church out in 50 services, not just one, because I don't want a whole lot of folk in one service. I want them in 50 services. And so why don't you ask God for 50 services? There's over a million people in the county. Ask God to bring all those million people to the Mount Zion Church and see what happens. Oh God, right now, we are not little people. We are ambassadors to you and we represent you. You've asked us to come before you and ask whatever we stand in the need of and even the desires of our hearts. When we look into our closet, we don't just see needs. We see desires, oh God, that we desire beyond our needs. When we eat sometimes, even outside in restaurants, we get four portions of food rather than just one portion of food. Now, God, we have asked for some great big things. Come into this house right now. Let your Holy Spirit fill this place up. I pray for the anointing and appointing on everybody who is in this room and looking at us online and who are coming to this church during this Sunday. I pray for this marvelous choir that you will give them big voices. I pray for the audio system that you give us big sound, God. I pray for the orchestra who will realize that they're not to play little music, but great music. In the name of Jesus, we pray and for his sake and all the people of God said, amen. Give God a great big hand praise in the house. Turn to about five people and just wave with one or two hands and let them know that you are glad to see them today. I'm so glad to see you this morning on this uh, marvelous Sunday morning. We're getting ready to head into Christmas and uh, Jesus is the reason for what? Jesus is the what? Jesus is the reason for the season. And so this is our season. Uh, when it comes down to the Muslim, they go and look towards Mecca during their uh, season. And so uh, hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of people head towards Mecca to celebrate uh, their season. And so this is our season. We ought to be inviting people to come to church. We ought to be inviting people to worship. We ought to be inviting people to be a part of this marvelous experience for Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. And as Pastor Larry has already said, what is his name? Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Can you imagine us being in this world without God? It would be a terrible, terrible world. And so we're here to celebrate. Say celebrate. I want you to get that sermon I preached the Sunday before last on uh, David who knew how to celebrate his pants off. How many of y'all remember that sermon? There's a few of y'all remember that sermon. How many of you don't rem remember any of my sermons? Let me see your hands. I'm going to make you stand up in the corner on one feet, and I'm not going to let you come out until after I preach an extremely long sermon, very softly. Amen. And so we want you to uh, celebrate Christmas. Bring your family. Invite some friends. Don't worry about it being too packed in here. It will never, never happen, and you will always be safe. And we're now encouraging people. Uh, who are still sick and recovering, very softly, who are recovering, that they will go into the um, drive-in church. And those who are uh, not vaccinated, we don't want them to get sick, do we, Mount Zion? No, we don't want them to get sick, do we, Mount Zion? Those who are not vaccinated, we don't want them to get sick. If they come into contact with us and we might have something, they're likely to catch something and get sick. Those who are vaccinated, are likely to move on and be all right, not even know that they ever were sick. And so we want them to also remain, uh, come, in, come inside, uh, uh, come into the uh, parking lot and, and have worship there. We want to keep them safe, stay safe. Amen. We're going to ask that you prepare for your giving very softly. That's a little loud, very softly. Uh, we're going to ask that you will prepare for your offering, your tithing, and your giving. As the technician brings to us, our uh, information. Fall Outreach 
Join us in bringing new or gently used coats for families in need in partnership with Love Incorporated. We also are supporting Rahab Ministries in helping women who have been victims of human trafficking. They are now providing housing and support for these women. We are collecting hair products to stock at their housing unit. More information can be found in the foyer. You've got to tell God what it is you specifically want him to do about a particular situation in your life. Because prayer will help you to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yeah. Let me see if I can give you a working definition of prayer that I had to think about for a while. And you perhaps will have to think about it for a while or maybe not. Perhaps you're smarter than me and you can get it right away. But I had to think about this definition of prayer. Prayer, according to Dr. Tony Evans, is earth giving heaven permission to interfere in her affairs. Prayer is earth giving heaven permission to interfere. God knows what you are up against, but God will not get involved in it until you ask of prayer. Bring your prayer request to church starting Sunday, October 31st. This will be the start of our 40 days of finishing strong prayer movement. Join the entire church in special prayer starting the first week of November. Celebrate the Christmas season with us on two special Sundays. December 19th, the theme is The King is Coming. On that Sunday, we will focus on gathering, giving, and blessing others as Jesus did us. And to support local businesses, we will have Christmas gift shopping in the foyer where you can get gifts for your family and friends. Then on Sunday, December 26th, our theme is The King is Here, where we celebrate the birth of our Savior. In the foyer, we will have a celebration of Christmas with cookies and milk. Wear your red or green or both on these Sundays. We are thankful for all the great things God has done this year. We have expanded our footprint locally and internationally through our social media ministry. As you know, Dr. Macon is a community archbishop and leader of pastors all across Northeast Ohio. And this month, he will be consecrating Pastor Larry as a community bishop in the Lord's Church in a virtual consecration service with pastors and leaders from across the country. Let's continue to pray for our leaders at Mount Zion. In the year in prayer, worship, and praise with us. Join us Friday, December 31st at 8 p.m. for our annual Light of the Night Watch Night New Year's Eve service. Come inside and praise your way to the new year or join the drive-in service outside. We will have a special televised event with TCT Television live from Mount Zion where we will be broadcasting our services internationally. Don't miss out on a wonderful experience. The last quarter of the year, we ask every member, follower, and partner of the Mount Zion Ministry to give a special donation. This year's campaign is the 321 Legacy Seed Offering. When you plant the right seed into God's house at the end of the year, it will bring blessings, opportunities, and divine protection for the new year. We like to connect our giving to projects. However, the most important reason for our giving should be about being a good steward of what God has given us. Of course, you can give a bigger gift. However, we are asking everyone to give $300, $200, or $100 above and beyond their regular giving. Write Legacy on your regular offering envelope or submit by mail, Mount Zion app, Givelify, or our text to give platform. Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all that he's doing here at Mount Zion. I'm going to ask if you would stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12, as we all stand at the attention of God and we read that responsibly. Malachi 3, 6 through 12. Even if you're online, we'd love it if you could follow along with us as we go into the word of God. 
and we prepare our minds and hearts for giving. The oh, saying yes. says that you can't be God's giving no matter how hard you try. The Bible says this. It says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say... Will a man rob God? Yes. Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now and herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let yes. us bow our heads in a moment of thanks today as we're giving of our tithe and offering. It's our way to give God some glory. Somebody say glory. Glory. There's a song that says give him glory. Think about it today. What is glory? It simply means to give God what he is due acknowledge his greatness today lord if it weren't for you i wouldn't have lived this long if it weren't for you i wouldn't be here today or even have the future that you have in store for me so god deserves the glory and the way you give it to him is through honor can somebody say honor honor means that you just give him the credit and one of the reasons that uh, god established the church was that we have a way and a place designed for us to, to give him the honor that he's due. So when we give to God, we're honoring God. And know today that when you honor God, what will God do for you? He'll give you that which you are seeking even today. So in the Bible, when Peter, excuse me, the apostle Peter, he showed honor to God and God healed someone that he wanted to be healed. So if you honor God, remember this, that God will honor you. Let us bow our heads and just talk to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to honor you. We give not grudgingly, but we give cheerfully, knowing and believing that God loves a cheerful giver. Bless the giver in a mighty and powerful way. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are going to bring their tithe and offering. You can come right now to the tithe oh, and offering yes. baskets, even online. Go to mzov.org or go to the GiveLify app. The song says, give him glory.
order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. As you bow your heads and brief word of prayer, as we attempt to break the bread of life, pray for the message, pray for the messenger even now. We cannot preach this word unless you are in prayer. Ask God to speak to me and through me and in me. Ask him to open up your heart, your mind, and your spirit that you might be receptive to what God has to say to all of us today here in this text. Eternal God, our Father, we ask that you would bless us even now. We attempt to break the bread of your, your word. We know, O oh God, that we cannot break the bread unless you break us. Break us, God. Break us of whatever is hindering us of hearing and following your word. Break us, O oh God, even now of our other thoughts that we might focus in on what thus said the Lord. Remind us again that Christmas is about your son Christ. Without Christ there is no Christmas. We ask you to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of our unrighteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, Amen. Give God a great big hand praise. As you turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, the book of Luke, there's many stories there in the book of Luke. There are many stories that we could lift up during Christmas time. But in the book of Luke, there is a particular story there that ties in with the Christmas story. Say Christmas. And it is one of the stories that we lift up. Could I have your mic, Larry? Amen. I'm going to read this out of the Message Bible. Out of the Message Bible. I'm going to read this out of the Message Bible. As you all stand together, I want to read this together. As we stand. Amen. Repeat after me. During the rule, starting in first, uh, Luke, the first chapter, verse 5. Marvelous story. We're going to read, during the rule of Herod, repeat after me, during the rule of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest assigned service in the regiment of Abijah. His name was, where is it up at the, on the screen there? His name was Zechariah. His wife was descended from the daughters of Aaron. Her name was Elizabeth. Together, they lived honorably before God, careful in keeping to the ways of the commandments and enjoying a clear conscience before God. But they were childless because Elizabeth could never conceive and now they were quite old. It so happened that as Zechariah was carrying out his priestly duties before God, working the shift assigned to his regiment, it came as one turn in life to enter the sanctuary of God and burn incense. The congregation was gathered and praying outside the temple at the hour of the incense offering. Unannounced, an angel of God appeared just to the right of the altar of incense. Zacharias was paralyzed in fear, but the angel reassured him don't fear, Zechariah, 
Your prayer has been heard. Elizabeth, your wife, will bring a son by you. You are to name him John. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's John the Baptist. Turn the mic down just to, the main down just a little bit. You're going to leap like a gazelle for joy. And not only you, many will delight in his birth. Now go down to verse 18. Verse uh, 18. Zechariah said to the angel, do you expect me to believe this? I am an old man, and my wife is an old woman. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he ought not to say that, at least like that. But the angel said, I am Gabriel, the centennial of God, or messenger of God, sent especially to bring you this glad news. But because you won't believe me, you'll be unable to say a word until the day of your son's birth. Every word I've spoken to you will come true on time, God's time. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I wish God would keep his promise sometime. Turn to your neighbor behind you and say, neighbor, don't you wish that God would keep his promise sometimes? Turn to yourself and say, I wish God would keep his promise. Now repeat after me. Is God really a promise keeper? Say, neighbor, sometimes I doubt when I ask him for things that he will keep his promise on it. How many of you feel that way today? Is there times in your life to which you wanted to heal or you wanted to get something and God said this would happen and you doubted whether or not it really would happen? Have you ever doubted whether or not the Lord will keep his promise? Now be honest with me. He promised that I'll never leave you nor forsake you and yet there's been times in your life as if you felt as if God did not keep his promise and he left you. You were asking for something, and you doubted whether or not he would actually give you what you asked for. What is the problem? Say, what is the problem? You can go to your seat. What is the problem there? Is God really a promise keeper? Does he really keep his promise? That is the question that we're confronted with here in this particular, in this particular text, whether or not God will keep his promise. Is he a promise keeper? Some years ago in 1990, a brother by the name of Bill McCartney, a former college coach, had established what was called the promise keepers or the men promise keepers. And he had gathered together during 1990 thousands and thousands of men who made promises publicly. They promised that they would be men of integrity. They promised that they would remain Christian men. They promised that they were going to continue working and going to church. They even promised that they were going to be great leaders. Bill McCartney, that great college university coach had led this effort and in seven years more than seven million men had coveted to make certain kinds of promises in fact in 1990 in the month of august one million men came together uh, in washington dc as they did during Martin Luther King Day, 1963, August 28th, and made covenant before Bill McCartney and the world. And there were a million men who came together 
to make this promise that they were going to continue to become men of integrity and that they will stay with this great movement called the Promise Keepers, where men would gather together annually and make certain kinds of covenants and promises. And yet here we are in 2021 and we hear nothing about the Promise Keepers. I, I know it's a pandemic, but we have not heard in years where they have gathered together in these large arenas in order to reaffirm their promises to God, their family, and their nation. The truth of the matter is, many people just don't keep their promise. Young people don't keep their promise. You give them the privilege to go out and have fun at nighttime, and they commit to the promise that they will be back in at a certain time, nine o'clock or so, and then they walk in at 11, 12 o'clock as if there was no covenant or commitment before they left out of the door. They forgot their promise. The truth of the matter is, parents are constantly not keeping their promises all the time, even to their children, and even in marriages, when we come before the altar, there are those of us who commit and covenant to forsake all other and to be committed only to the person that we are marrying and the truth of the matter is that there are many folk who have left their covenant and their promise to do what Al Green called let's stay together why Christians don't even make uh, Christians make promises you know they become Christians they give their life to Christ they join the church they are hot and on fire for the Lord but then there comes that time where that fire goes down and you never see them again. What has happened? They have not kept their promise. The truth of the matter is, here again, we wonder sometimes whether or not even God will keep his promise. That's the central idea here in this particular text in the book of Luke, uh, who brings up a person by the name of Zechariah. Zechariah, as you remember, was a priest in the temple, and annually they chose a priest to do some consecration inside of the uh, temple, and only once a year could a person have that privilege, and Zechariah gets that particular privilege once, the text says, in a lifetime. He is married to a young lady by the name of Elizabeth, though she is now no longer young, but rather she is old like Zechariah. Both of them have come up in the priesthood after Aaron, as we discover in the Old Testament, that they both are part of the priesthood family. And they probably heard about the promise that God had made to Israel that one day he was going to bring to them a Messiah, a Messiah, Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ will one day come to the earth, that God in the flesh would one day emerge from heaven and come down to earth. And that both of them had heard about that promised Messiah, but they also had realized that there was a promise made to them, that they too would one day have a child and have a son. So there's a kind of three-act, kind of three-act stage. I want you to remember here in the text, when it comes down to the promises of God, you might want to write this down. When it comes down to the promises of God, here is how it works. Here is how it works. Because I'm sure you're asking for God for something right now. I'm sure you've been asking for God for something. I'm sure there's someone in the house who have been asking God to preserve their health. I'm sure that someone has asked God to be a doctor in a sick room. I'm sure someone is struggling with finances, and so you've asked God to provide for your finances. I'm sure that someone in the house want to have a marriage or a family reconciled. I'm sure somebody has great aspiration, visions, and dreams to do something, and you've asked God for it. I'm sure that there is some loved one that you've been praying for for a while, and it does not seem as if God is going to fulfill, fulfill his promise in taking care of that person. I'm sure that someone wants this nation to be settled a little bit more. You've been praying for the country and the nation, and it doesn't seem as if 
God is going to fulfill his promise. I'm sure you just asked him for some big things. And you're wondering whether or not God is going to fulfill his promise. I'm going to be short today. I'm going to be short today. Some of you are a little sleepy today. I'm going to be short today. Here is how it works. It's kind of like an ABC. The first A is, is that there is a promise that God gives us. You need to write this down. You might not need it today, but just keep on living. Life is, uh, is, is filled of pit. Uh, uh, pit holes and life is filled with problems. But here are three things that you need to just pick up real quick. One, God makes a promise to us. God makes a promise to us. Here it is in the text. God makes a promise to uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth. He makes the promise years ago, but truthfully, he makes the promise 400 years years earlier. In the book of Malachi, the fourth chapter, around the fifth verse, God makes a promise that he's going to send someone in the likeness of the prophet Elijah, who is going to turn the fathers and the mothers towards their children, that there will be a voice that will come before the Messiah comes. And the voice is going to be John the Baptist because he is in the likeness, he is in the likeness of one of the Old Testament prophets. And so uh, Zechariah is looking for the promise that is being made to him, that he and Elizabeth will have a son, but of course they are now old, beyond childbearing. And so he does not believe that there's no way that that old man and that old lady could have a child, though it has been prophesied that there would be a voice that would come before the Christ child, and that ultimately becomes John the Baptist. And so Malachi 4, the last book in the Old Testament, is connected with Luke 1. And for 400 years, God is silent on it. But he has made a promise, say a promise. And so he tells uh, the Bible says that all of a sudden they, are, they have this promise and they have been waiting. That's the second stage of the fulfillment of a promise. I wish I had time to preach this thing. There's always a waiting time. Say there's always a waiting time. You don't always get what you want immediately. The songwriter said, you can't hurry, God. I wish I had a witness over there. You can't hurry, God. Oh, no, you just got to wait. You can't, you can't push God. You can't move God in a certain kind. He has a kind of timing for everything that he does. And so you cannot hurry, God. You got to wait. So there is a time of waiting. In the case of the Jewish people, they had to wait 400 years between Malachi and Luke. There's a span of 400 years. In the case of Zechariah and Elizabeth, there is a waiting time, but while you're waiting, you need to know that you just don't wait, but you gotta learn how to wait and pray. Can't give up, can't give up on God. You gotta wait, say wait. You gotta hope, say hope. And you got to pray, say pray. And so there's a waiting time. And the truth of the matter is, we never know how long the waiting will come. And, and so here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. The angel comes uh, to Zechariah inside uh, of the temple. He's doing his priestly duty, says verse 8. And uh, all of a sudden, he's burning the incense inside of the temple, or of the sanctuary, as the Message Bible says. Uh, the congregation is gathered and they're praying outside the temple at the hour and incense offering. Verse 11, unannounced, an angel of God appeared just to the right of the altar of incense and Zechariah was afraid. Here we are praying for angels and when angels show up, we get afraid. But the angel reassured him, don't fear, Zacharias, your prayer, Zacharias, he says, your prayer has already been heard. God hears your prayers. 
and your prayer has already been heard. God knows what you're asking for and your prayer has already been heard. Sometimes it's good to know that God just hears us, that our prayers are heard. Elizabeth, your wife, he says, will bear a son by you. You are to name him John. You're going to leap like a gazelle for joy, and not only you, many will delight in his birth. Verse 15, he'll achieve great statue and God with God. He'll drink neither wine nor beer. He'll, no wine nor beer. Boy, that could be, not be some of us. <laughs> he'll be filled with the Holy Spirit from the moment he leaves his mother wombs. He will turn many sons and daughters of Israel back to their God. He will herald God's ar arrival in the style and strength of Elijah, soften the hearts of parents to children, and kindle, I wish y'all had that scripture up there, kindled devout understanding among hardened skeptics. He'll get the people ready for God. Zachariah said to the angel, do you expect me to believe this? I, I need to tell you that God always come through. It, it doesn't matter what the promise is. God will make a way out of no way. Have I got a witness in the house? You ask him for health and strength. It may not come today. It may not come tomorrow. It may not come next month. It may not come next year. But if you just wait on the Lord and be of good courage, he will strengthen your heart in the meantime. Sometimes all you need is God to strengthen your heart. But I stop by to tell you, God is always true to his word. Have I got a witness in the house? The doctor may say this, but there is a doctor above every doctor who will say something else. You've got to wait on the Lord. And while you're waiting, just don't wait doing nothing, but pray to God. Tell God all about it. He'll help you get through the waiting period. The problem with Zechariah was he couldn't wait on the Lord. He did not believe that the Lord would give him the promised son of his life, John the Baptist. But the Bible says that one day God's promise came true. He's always true to his promise. He will not promise you something and not give it to you. Is there anybody in the house who have asked God for something and you didn't think God would give it to you? You looked around. It didn't come immediately, but it came right on time. I need to give you one point. God is not only an on time God, God is right in his timing. When he gives it to you, it's always the right time. Oh, you might not need this morning, but you keep on living. Come on, stand on your feet. You keep on living. You might not need this this morning. In the right time, he's not always on time, but he's always there in the right time. So when you cannot trace God, you must always trust God. I've asked him for many things in my life and I thought that he would give it to me the next day. I thought he would give it to me the next month, but I discovered it didn't come the next day or the next month. I've asked him to heal my body sometime and it didn't come immediately. It was like that man who asked him to give him his eyesight. And the Bible said that when he asked God to give him his eyesight, the Bible says that he anointed his eyes, took some mud and anointed his eyes. And he said, can you now see? He said, yes, I can see a bit, but I cannot see clearly. He went back and anointed him a second time and even a third time. And after a third time, he said, can you see now? He says, I can see clearly. But the man had to wait on God. Give God some praise right there. The man had to wait on the Lord. The Bible says, they that wait on the Lord, he shall, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. You gotta learn how to wait on God. What was the problem with Zechariah? The angel appears. The angel appears. And when the angel appears, here is Zacharias. 
No, it cannot happen, even if an angel come down and tell me. The angel turns around and says, because you doubt, because you don't trust God, because you don't believe God will keep his word, because you cannot lean and depend upon God when God has already said, I'll do it. I've been waiting on God through this pandemic, and at every step of the way, God has proven himself to be true to his word. What is it that I've asked him to do? I've said, God, take care of me and my family. I said, God, take care of the church. I said, God, take care of the nation. I said, God, take care of the world. And through all, out all of the struggles, God at every time has been true to his word. When the pandemic began, I asked God for a promise. I said, God, would you keep the weather nice for Mount Zion every Sunday? That was a pretty hard ask. He said to me, he said, every Sunday is going to be nice enough for people to be out there in that lot to worship me on Sunday morning. And I've seen storms jump over Oakwood Village. I've seen snow move into Beechwood. I've even come to church on 480 and, and it was terrible till I got to Mount Zion Church. Have I got a witness? It was bad to some degree at eight o'clock where people could get inside the church eight or nine o'clock, even 9.30, but, time, but by time 11 o'clock came, everything seemed to move away. Why? Because God never fails on his promises. Whatever he promised you, remember he promises, and then you have to wait, pray, and hope, and then deliverance is always going to come. Let's bow our heads in a word of thanks unto God. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for allowing us to worship you in spirit and in truth. And even now, God, we believe that you're going to do exactly what you say in your word. God, we believe that you're going to act in your own good time. God, we believe that no weapon formed against us during that waiting time will ever prosper. God, we believe that you're going to heal our bodies, those who are suffering with disease, those who are suffering with heart conditions, those who are suffering with diabetes, those who are suffering with high blood, those who are suffering with diagnosis that the doctors have given, that you're going to remove them. And just as it became Zachariah and Elizabeth time, that their time is coming also. We believe that it's going to occur because you are no short of your word. Your yea is yea. But oh God, in the meantime, teach us how to be patient. Teach us how to be trusting. Teach us how to stand on your word. Teach us how to pray. And when you give to us that deliverance, the fulfillment of your promise, we know that we will be all right in that good time. And we will forever give your name the praise. Would you talk to God in your own way right now? Would you talk to God in your own way? Would you talk to God in your own way right now? Would you talk to God in your own way? Would you ask God for some big things again? When he says to you, I promise, would you ask God to give you the, stag the, the way to wait on him? Would you ask God that when he delivers what he has promised on, would you say to God that when you deliver, I'm going to have sh a shouting time. The other day, I kept asking God for different small things. And at every turn, he promised me and he gave them to me. That's just who God is. He's the God who will keep his promise. He's not like the promise keeper group of men who did not keep their promise. But rather, he is God. And his word is always true. If you're here today, you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The reason why we gather here today, because God wants to have a relationship with you. That's what this sermon, that's what this service is all about. 
that God wants to have a relationship with you. The only way he can have a relationship with you, it must come through his son, Jesus Christ. And if you want a relationship with him, all you have to do is repent of your sin, turn from your sin, and say, I want to walk with God the rest of my life. That I believe that God saved me through his son, Jesus Christ. And if you make that kind of commitment and belief, that you believe he died on the cross for your sin, resurrected from the grave, then he walks with you the rest of your life, but also into eternal life. If you're here today and you've made that commitment, I pray that you'll contact our church and let us know because we want to celebrate with you. If you're here today, as every head is bowed, every head is bowed, no one's looking up at me. If you're here today and you've never been baptized in water, would you lift up your hand? You've never been baptized in water. Would you lift up your hand? You've never been baptized in water. If you're here today, is there one? If you're here today and this is the first time you made that confession that I just stated, would you lift up your hand? Amen. I don't see any hand in here. If you're here today and you want to recommit yourself or unite with our church, would you lift up your hand? Is there one? Amen. That suggests that we're all members in this church. And we hope that you will bring some friends next week. It's about saving souls. It's about bringing people to Christ. The Bible says it's about sowing into the kingdom lives that need to be changed. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this time that you've allowed us to gather here in this place. We thank you for this wonderful choir that have sacrificed their time. We thank you for all of the members and friends who gather today. And even God, as we move into this time of celebration called Christmas or Christ coming to us in the flesh, we pray, oh God, those things that are diverting our minds, our hearts and our spirit away from the Jesus Christ, the God's son and God who has come to earth. We pray that we can focus for the rest of this year on God with us. Emmanuel has come to the earth. Bless us now the rest of this day in Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said amen. Give God a great big hand praise all over the church. Turn to about five people and wave at them. Amen. And consider yourself dismissed as you stand at a distance.